Hello there, everyone, and welcome back to Equestrian War. I'm your host, Mr. United Kingdom of Aeroslover. But we gotta talk about peace with Wing... Wingbody, maybe? With a war on the main, then turn decisively in our favor. Giulio Bicolini has approached us with an offer of peace. He obviously expected to secure a quick and easy victory while we were distracted by our other foes. Now that the Kingdom of Wingbody is facing the prospect of a protracted conflict with us, Giulio Bicolini is proposing a return to the status quo antebellum. There are many reasons to accept this offer. The war is taking a heavy toll on our nation. And if to make a new peace now could prolong it indefinitely. Probably not, though. But some other governments say we should not let Giulio Bicolini offer the white peace. This foreign tyrant has already attacked us without provocation, so it's clear that he cannot be trusted. Perhaps we could ma take uh, or make dismantling the Kingdom of Wingbody's Bodies Colonial Empire a new war aim. Well, they're at war with these guys over here. They have less than 30,000 manpower. They don't have a ton of divisions. We have or almost literally landing on top of them. Accept his offer? No. At this point, uh, we're also doing research advanced zebra metallurgy. With millions of zebras now numbering among our citizenry, we have a golden opportunity to combine the magic of our races to benefit us all. We will invite a uh, zebra alchemist and metallurgist into our school to teach courses on the craft. We want to create those methods into our own manufacturing processes. Together, we can achieve so much more than we could ever apart. Cool. End the war with Barty. Uh, if not complete within 120 days, we'll end in a white peace, we'll lose political power and stability. We've chosen to dismantle the Lingbarding sphere of influence, which is only so long our systems will allow us to be war over such small gains. What do you mean, small gains? Bro, we're invading Wingbardy itself. We've landed in Wingbardy itself. I don't think this is small small goals here, man. I think we got some pretty thick, heavy goals. And you know, at this point, send them all together. We're also, I combine these guys a whole bunch together, so. That's why they're a bit thick here. There you go. Bro, I am not going to tolerate getting destroyed like this. Or getting destroyed like that in the last episode. Just for us to lay down and die for him. Are you got to be kidding me. And you know what? We're going to take Carthen. Just because we can. The fall of Carthen. Woe to the vanquished. Go, 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 go. Ah, but we got some comments uh, as well, such as... <laughs> Look at all these little convoys. I bet they don't like it. A fantastic job winning the North Zebra War. It's supposed to be very hard, but you shouldn't feel bad about losing it. Hippogriffia has, has a post-war continent if they do lose, and you'll eventually get a chance to get revenge. Hippogriffia already starts with the largest most powerful navy in the game, but we'll look into balancing it a bit more. As for the peace option with Wing Barty, we're going to change the requirements so that if you lose any of the outlying islands, you, then you can still peace them out, so long as your home island is safe. It's great. So it says, it's not that hard as a player to spam cast into a grind into dust. Though the Navy needs some knowledge of the meta with ca the caveat that Hippogriffia does have good templates that can be modified easily to met meta templates. Someone else replied though, my advice might be to perhaps give Wingbardi a few more Marines or perhaps to give them a focus to give a few more. That might encourage them to more aggressively Navy invade. Um, that's a... I don't know if I can agree with that one. You didn't see how off screen they kept Navy invading me again and again and again and again and again. Like my second and th first attempt. So, good job that was... I'm glad I didn't show you that stuff. I was so ragey. But the victory of harmony. For Joyce Supergriffia, we have defeated our foes in the North of the Zipperkin War and are restored peace to these lands. A harmonist Sufrit. Oh, these puppets, huh? De radicalized Cheruptera. A thousand years of hatred has twisted Cheruptera into a particularly violent society. Even after our victory, they conduct guerrilla warfare on our people. We'll do everything we can to de radicalize the civilian population of Cheruptera and secure a lasting peace. Don't take no for an answer. A new perspective. As much as Vibrant Coral uh, enjoyed her university studies on Mount Eris, nothing compared to the being back home in Sequestria. Besides the sounds, even the physics of moving underwater just felt just right. The only thing she didn't enjoy was discussing politics at the dinner table. The path the government is taking will lead us to ruin, her father said. Biting into a piece of kelp. It all started with the occupation of Zumidia. That decision, while well-intentioned, made another war inevitable, and then left us sinking precious resources into a very poor country with a completely alien culture. Raft would warn us about this and no pony listened to him. Now, through the sacrifices of many brave creatures, we've won another war, and whatever leaders decided on, more interventions, more occupations, more foreign aid. Pretty soon we'll be occupying all of Zebrica, and the average sea pony's concerns will be completely forgotten. <laughs> Barbara couldn't take his uh, rant lying down. Choosing her words carefully, she replied, I understand where you're coming from, Dad, but you got it all wrong. Another war was inevitable b before the establishment of the Zumidian Mandate. Tyrannical regimes will always try to destroy free societies like ours. 
Her father was unimpressed. If the only way to preserve harmony is to topple every town in the world, I'm afraid our system is doomed. Trying to force your values on others never ends well. We should focus on promoting harmony at home in our own communities. Community, yes, Vibrant exclaimed, sensing an opening. Harmony can't exist without a community to support it. If you view our community as just one country, then isolation seems like the right choice. But if you view our community as all of North Zebrica, you'll realize what our government is doing is absolutely necessary. We're imposing our values on others. We're trying to empower harmonious voices within our, the countries we've liberated so they can become responsible members of the, our community. After a moment's pause, the father said, Huh, I took another bite. I never thought about it like that before. Cool. Finish it. And force concessions on them. Well, that'd be kind of cool. Eh, we can't do anything here, so we can probably close all, all of this stuff. ARC Warfare, not bad. Come back over here as well, and... Sure, why not? This is what they get for being big duty heads to us. And we won! Go figure. Um, with these guys, Sikameon, Asterion. Sikameon, well... Who's Asterion? Well, that's hard to tell. Marilyn. Well, I'll just get some to this, these guys. No. Well, whatever. I gave you the wrong group. This is in Zebrica. How many bonds are gone? Motor landing craft. Well. Well, we ended the war. Okay. Well then, uh, I'm gonna have you guys retreat back here because supply is probably not so good up there. A new kind of war. Then again, resistance is pretty bad down here too. It is what it is. Actually, you know what? If you're gonna do that, just come down here. <coughs> uh, Colonel Cirrus Windflow took a deep swig of coffee before returning to his map. The whole region around Urs Ursagra was full of cheer up Terran and guerrillas, yet he couldn't see them to pin them down in any location. Every enemy attack caught his force completely surprise surprise before he could organize a response they or disappear. It was as if the, the guerrillas could melt into the terrain or worse into the civilian population. The colonel stops were interrupted by the sound of a patrol returning. He opened his tent flap and saw a platoon of hippogriffs leading dozens of ponies in camp. Lieutenant cried, approaching the lead hippogriff, What's the meaning of this? The lieutenant, a much younger griff, has a crazed look in his eyes. We lost three of our number of three of our number two snipers as we passed by the village we marched in and took every able-bodied uh or every every able-bodied bat prisoner at least one of them got got to be a gorilla and the rest are guilty of helping him hide colonel winfield said we'll very well detain them for now and i'll deal with them later as the colonel moved back towards the tent he heard screaming near the edge of the mat camp rushing to the scene he found two soldiers holding back a very old mare let me in she shrieked give me give him back i have to find him calm down man the colonel said motioning for the gods to release her what do you need to find my son, you took him. Give him back, the mayor said, breaking down in tears. Please, he's my only son. Don't kill him, I beg you. The colonel was speechless. If they were ever going to have a chance of pacifying Chirup Terra, they would need to win over the hearts and minds of these ponies. But every stop they, or every step they took to combat their insurgents only alienated the population further. Colonel Wimplow could see this vicious cycle spiraling out of control before his eyes. If something doesn't change soon, the war may never end. Coltarginian Republic. We can put the most... Oh. Struck of the Tyrants. Peace in her time. Intervene in the Gr Great War. Request equestrian assistance. Well, our harmonist Sufrit. Jezabela and other harmonites and constitutions are ready to hold a new convention of draft a new constitution for Kolthag, which enshrines harmonist values and ensures uh, no Sufrit turns Kolthag into a dictatorship as, uh, as our kids did. We wish her luck and hope that new, the soon Coltag will be a shining example of harmony in North Zebrica. Child of Monsters. Oh, well, I guess request equestrian assistance. Equestria has some scholars and southeastern moon speakers who may know how to untangle the webs of hatred and twisted religion which bind the Cherub Terrans. We should invite them here as advisors on how to handle the Cherub Terran situation. The Fate of Cultiva. Skystar liked to think of herself as a good mediator. She firmly believed in solving conflicts by trying to see things from other creatures' perspective. Her empathy had served her well in the past, but now faced with a decades-long social conflict, it was clear she would need more than empathy. I must have said it a thousand times already, but I'll say it again, snorted uh, Zeshmunazashzerutid. They're now in Kothvan revolutionary. The people of Kothva are tired of direct rule from Kothag. I spent my whole li adult life fighting off corrupt landlords and brutal generals sent by Kothagian Sufrits to terrorize us. Enough is enough. We demand our land and our freedom. I don't deny that the abuses you suffered are great, said Jezab 
Jezab Zela Zeshmid, the leader of the Kothangian harmonists. But can't you see that things will be different now? Our new government has ordered to apologize to the Kothans and promise to enact sweeping land reforms. We should not use the sins of past Kothangian tyrants to justify dividing our people. We are stronger than when we stand together. Zeshmona Zash and Jezab Zela looked towards Skystar. Both of them had made very good points, but neither was willing to budge. With the two sides deadlocked, it was up to her to make a decision. She could understand both perspectives, but in the end, she could only make a side with one. Kothva is an integral part of Kotheg. Kothva deserves autonomy. I want to integrate everybody, man. But, you know, whatever. Um, is that is that possible? Let's see. Draft Constitution. Trust in Carrot Stick. A Silver Stream Plan. North Zebrica Reconstruction. Found the NZFTA. High Command. Well. I think I can play Training Grounds. Second Beacon of Harmony. <clears throat> Excuse me. The only beacon of harmony. Oh. Contact the Scapatoria programs. Ooh. In depth cooperation with the OHS. S fr preserving friendship with Smile. Ooh, that's pretty good. Or we have this side too. Or I guess we technically could do either one. Entrench representative institutions. That's not bad. Um, return to normalcy. General director of production with harmonious syncretic economics. That's not bad. With national syndicalist elements? With centrally planned elements? Oh. Expand state industry? Private industry? Pensions for veterans? To commodify food? Austerity and sound spending? The social state? Interesting. Well, you know what? Let's go with Cold Blood Reserves Autonomy. Just because. I want to see what their focus is like. Hey, look. Zenervo Ozid, champion of the people. Oh, interesting. Nice. And they have their unique focus too. Awesome. The devs have done a great job. And as much as I complain, and as if you know, if you follow my channel at all, you know I complain a whole bunch. Um, but like, I still love what the devs have done. They listen and they're, they're so good. Like, they're just so competent. It's not even funny. They're just awesome. But we're still getting a lot of uh, stuff done here. We still haven't done long. A distance friendship. Oh, shelter distance. If you're gonna read that again, please go ahead. But trial of the monsters. After much searching, we found the remaining records of the LMRD's archives of horror. For the sake of justice for the victims, we must reveal these crimes against sentient, sentient life publicly and put on trial every creature we've captured who bears responsibility for them. Yeah, as we're still building ourselves up, uh, we could probably build more civvies too if we really wanted to. That'd be good. Howling Hills. But yeah, I like building up civvies. Not bad. Um, I don't plan on going to war anymore. We're out of cars. Actually, it's a lot better than I thought it was. Because at one point, we were like a negative 11,000. So, seeing this is not too bad, honestly. And, of course, we gave this to them. And we did really well over here for some reason. So, uh, further develop metallurgy, basic zebra alchemy. Yeah, the questions arrive. Leather drums trotted excitedly along a platoon of heavily armed hippogriffs. For most ponies going into war zone would be a nightmare, but he was treating it like a grand adventure. Hey, said the other soldier beside him. We appreciate you being here, but no need to thank me, Leathers exclaimed. I would have never passed it up an opportunity to meet my long lost sharp Terran kin. Um, yeah, it's great, but try, not, try to move more quietly. We're passing through a very dangerous sector. Uh, Leathers smirked. Have you considered that maybe you have so much trouble here because you're too afraid to approach the locals? The Poon caught, uh, caught sight of a village, and before he could be told not to, Leather drums darted right in. The villagers were all in hiding, but when they realized he was at the festival, they began to emerge. Who are you? asked a sickly colt. I'm Leather Drums, a moon speaker from. Ayakachtli. Do you mean a new Ayakachtli? No, old Ayakachtli. Back in Equestria. Gaspin quiet murmurs filled the village. Are you with the hippogriffs? said a young man. Yes. Why? she asked, horrified. Well, I know they've done some things to you that are not so nice, but I promise they're not bad creatures. I'm here because I want help and the war. If you're not fighting for the nightmares, shouted an old stallion, then you're a heretic. To every point of surprise, Leather smiled. Staying true to our faith doesn't mean dying for the nightmare moon. Before the Lunar Rebellion, before even the arrival of Princess Luna, it was only the moon to guide her people. The villagers listened and hanging on to every word. Awesome. Trials of the Monsters, um, and then reconfigure North Zebrican Diplomacy. North Zebrica was hardly stable before the Chirup Terrans attacked. In order to ensure lasting peace in the region, we must settle old territorial disputes like the Tolbuk issue, uh, losing, using our position as the region's dominant power to act as peace brokers. Sounds like a very, very good idea. As we do have a cup of coffee to keep us nice and warm. Uh, closer to that one, that one. I'd like to invite these guys, but we can't. Promises of peace. Not super concerned about that stuff. 
economic policy. I don't mind expanding and developing more stuff. We can do this one too. We have enough political power. Uh, stuff like that. That's okay. Um, at this point, can we send you volunteers? We might as well. We can send four divisions. Actually, make sure everyone's the same type of division, except for the Marines. So you guys. Go do that. There you go. Alright, to Equestria, my friends. Cold stream. Yes, yes. We shall get involved. I don't think we have that many planes, but we'll do the best we can. We do have some planes here, which is nice. Fighters, do we have any extra? No, we do not. That sucks. Okay. Well, maybe we won't send any fighters yet. Let's send some casts. We don't really need them here right now. I'm sure we don't lose all of our, our ponies and whatnot. Nice. And... Our subs. Cheap and effective. Pretty good. Anything here, anything here, here, here. Oh, five tactics selection we'll get eventually, but whatever. The trial of the monsters. <coughs> Excuse us. The doctor's trial. I made a point of conducting the first trial under Chirrupton laws. This had a dual purpose to show that the legions had repeatedly flaunted the laws that the civilians operated under, and to provoke outrage at just how many th things the ML LMRD did perfectly legal. Ocean Spray, the mad scientist of the MLRD. LMRD was acquitted on the counts of grievously harming a bodily harm, murder, kidnapping, aggravated assault, and so on, simply because his victims were laborers. The trial was followed in death by the media, and even former legionnaires were incensed as he was acquitted by one, one by one by horrific acts of brutal torture. Of course, he, had, he embezzled funds and inflated his success. The fact that certain experiments were illegal for procedural reasons, and the terrorist actions of the Crescent Moon Society were all enough to get Ocean Spray and most of the others in the doctor's trial heavy poison sentences. Then came the trial under Arisian law. Crimes against sentient life, a war crime, serial murder, it was enough to get Ocean Spray and several others hanged. At the end of the trial, a curious change had come over the cheer up ten Terran public. They'd always pride themselves on their ruthlessness compared to the weak harmonists, but their laws were so weak that only under harmonist law would the monsters actually put down. The legions had protected them. The legions had protected themselves and given the experimental drugs the LMRD would sometimes test unenlisted soldiers and lower ranking officers. Cheer up Terran opinion solidified that, that the legions were essentially a racket. Much of the publicity was done by the officials in the former Cheropteran government, civilian government. One carrot stick in particular had stepped up and ensured that every Cheropteran he could reach would get the play-by-play -play of the trials. In the aftermath of the trials, he also convinced several insurgent groups to lay down their arms in exchange for amnesty. After so long with the Cheropteran public stonewailing efforts at a proper peace, it seemed the tide was turning, and the leaders were emerging on their side who was able to finally stop the cycle of violence. A few executions to wash away a millennium of blood. Strike of the tyrants. Well, they're gone. Um, so we can't do that one. Let's see, peace in her time. Eh, we can't go to that one. Intervene in the Great War. I don't want to intervene. I really don't. Um, so, it seems like we might have to. Well, we fought in the North Zebrican War. Our friends in Equestria were embroiled in a far greater conflict against a powerful and as terrible as Cheer Up Terra, Queen Crystals, and the Changelings. With our newly expanded force, we'll turn the tide of the war in the Great uh, War. Which is actually really cool. I like that a lot. Alright, boys and girls. Supply is going to be god awful, but we'll do the best we can. I did not expect that us to actually get over here and actually do this. Zemon Sassen. No one's really good on attack, so. Zemon seems the best, though. You got there very fast, Jesus. Yeah, I think I think Equestria will win in the end after this, because they're, they're stuck. We need more manpower. Oh, goodness. Let's go in. <coughs> One thing at a time. Radar. Oh, it's a little ahead of time. We still got this over here. Let's see. Oh, does it actually give us something? I didn't click on that because it says it doesn't give us anything. Oh, okay. That's interesting. I should have done that earlier. Okay. How about right there? Can you? Oh, they, do, they do have tanks. That's a thing. Um, here. I'll take out that, those divisions down there. Well, since we're here, we must keep doing this too. I'll put down a lot of resistance. Actually, we have enough ships and stuff like that. Or ships and uh, units to get rid of anything that we don't need. Can everyone do that? There you go. Hey, not bad. Well, Griffinheim. Alrighty, righty, righty. Um. These guys back in like that. 
and issue of Tobuk. Or Tobuk. Or, or the fate of Emazib first. One of the stranger moments of the North Zeppelin War was the last charge of the Emazib. A large force of tribal warriors under Zagwa, the Ironbreaker, appeared seemingly out of nowhere, fighting not only to free their homeland from the cheer up terror and oppression, but to avenge it. They fought with incredible brutality and uh, increased tactical acumen, seemingly head heedless of the rules of war, but masters of the art of war. At the same time, the charges were fought by our side. A large number of the Emazi fought with the Cherub Terrans, either to pay or, or out of fear with their Agulid Yumalez Atagan, the closest thing they had to a queen, being a figurehead for the Cherub Terrans after her mother's death. It's only a matter of time, or the last days of the war, that the truth of the situation came to light. Zagawa, uh, Zaga revealed that she had gathered her forces with, with the Agulid's secret blessing, and that they never could have reached us had Umalez not distracted her supposed overseers. Zalga then presented us an offer of peace from Umalez. After accepting the curious offer of surrender, we realized just how little authority the Agulid actually had to make the offer, and how many Emazib were fully ready to return to their old semi-nomadic ways and give up the dream of the kingdom of Zarantia. While we're grateful for the aid and the struggle for a nation that is romantic between the division within Zarantia, the deviousness of this Umalez character and the shocking brutality Zaga's troops displayed at fighting alongside us, we're unsure what will happen if we put faith in these Imazib. Help them build better than before. And a close provision. I don't really handle these territories. You know what? I hate doing this, but let them have their own space. You know, we have to garrison these areas, and they'll be our... Okay, they're not our puppets, god dang it. Um, god dang it. But whatever. It's fine. It's a generic focus tree. But whatever. Oh, we lose some factories, but not that many. We didn't really build that much up here anyways. Um, but one of these. Oops, there you go. Just keep building, you know. Uh, I could probably use Romilius too. There you go. As the ascendant power in North Zebraca is our responsibility to immediate uh, regional disputes. And no disputes more heated than the Tobuk question, founded over a millennia ago by the Pawnees of Merjit. The city was eventually conquered by the Kingdom of Warzena. Yet the Warzenans were never able to fully integrate the city's predominantly pony population, who came to see them as foreign occupiers, of course. In 961, uh, Imazib tribes invaded from the east and with the support of the city's inhabitants, made Tobuk a part of the new Zarantian state. The city remained content until Zarantian rule until the Storm King arrived and captured in uh, 1005. After we defeated the Yeti Conqueror, Tobuk became a republic ruled by merchants and warlords, now we must decide what to do with it. Warzena, a member of, uh, of our North Zebrakin Federation, insists that Tobuk is an integral part of the kingdom. While some parts privately admit that Warzenans only represent a majority in the small region around uh, Miharzahir, Tobuk still holds a place a pride of place in the minds of Warzenan nationalists. King Barak uh, Zamal VII has formally requested that we allow Warzenan to annex Tobuk, but other Federation members oppose this move. Many Arisians and Zumidians think the points of Tobuk are too culturally different from us to ever be properly integrated in the North Zebrakin Federation. The Warzenan request is also met with stiff resistance from the Zarantians. They argue that Tobuk is an integral part of their state, as most of the cities and inhabitants prefer to their rule to that of the Warzenans. Additionally, with the access to the port and industry of Tobuk, Zarantia will be reduced to an unviable un rum state. The Zerontians plead with us to award them all the Tobuk, while well, even threatening to break off diplomatic relations if we side with Warzena. With well, the future of North Zebraca and the United Kingdom of Eris' diplomatic reputation hanging in the balance, a decision has to be made. We can give the entirety of uh, entire territory to Warzena or Zarantia, or we can find some way of dividing between the two. Uh, Zarantia. Warzena. will prevent Zarantia from developing their industry and cause them to leave a faction. Compromise? We'll compromise. Because I still want them under us, but, you know, I still want them to develop. They still have this port, but they just need to develop it, that's all. Trying to play matchmaker? No. Trying to balance things out. Actually, it does help out with trying to put down resistance, too. It actually ain't bad. There you go. Really put down a lot of resistance. Uh, but then again, we have resistance up here, too. Yeah. There you go. Intervene in the Great War? Well, kind of where we are. Uh, oh, we could have done this one. Strike of the Tyrants. Well, it has no effect. This gives us an effect, right? Yeah, we might as well do that one. Uh, long live Queen Novo versus Long live Queen Skystar. Well, I'm kind of status quo right now. I kind of want to go with Queen uh, Novo still. Constitutional government reaffirm harmonic absolutism. Uh, why? Why do I gotta make a choice here? The Tobuckian Compromise. The Warzenians and Zarantians stared at each other, exasperated hippogriffs on each side, glancing about nervously. 
It was supposed to be quite simple. A certain rivulet without a name served as an obvious place to draw the border. But the Zarontian surveyor had accused the Warzinian counterpart of diverting his, the rivulet to get a few more square kilometers of territory. The Warzinian had immediately called in hippogriff surveyors, but their maps corroborated with the Zarontian accusation. Then the Zarontian surveyor had produced his own maps, which were provenly wildly inaccurate, <laughs> and actually showed the rivulet in a position which would give the Warzinians even more territory. <laughs> Eventually, the surveyors found that the rivulet had dried up and then returned flowing in slightly different locations several times over the last century. That something unexpected happened. The two zebras started laughing. What does it matter anyway? The Zarantian exclaimed. All this land is owned by some Tobuccanian farmers who will probably apply for dual citizenship anyways. The border stone didn't matter. The rivulet would move, the border would move with it, and the ponies living on the land would not particularly care one way or another. Zarantia had Tobuk, Warzen had Mehazarzir, and the Isle of Darna, and the locals could sort out exactly which side of the insignificant rivulet they wanted to live on. All is well that ends well. You should be able to hold there. We'll see. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, we're harmony. I'm not. I'm not push. I'm not. When I play harmony, I'm not pushing very hard. As much as I want Queen Sk Sky Star, not the Queen. Oh, allows you just by war goals on nations have not generated world tension. Or just go with, the, with what we already have: stability, focus on defense and peace. I wasn't trying to rock the boat too much in this one, you know. <coughs> Excuse me. Um. Oh man, I don't know. We want equal representation. The power of representatives, reform its royal, royal sovereignty, draft a constitution. Well, I don't know. Royal, eccentric royal. Oh crap, I don't want to make a decision now. Um. Wait, what? Wait, what? Oh, we joined him. Okay. I was like, what, what's going on? We got rid of our own faction. And we got rid of these guys, too. That's actually not bad. That's actually really not bad. Um, sorry about that. That was my mom. If you heard that, my mom yelling at my cat. Um, you know what? We joined a new faction. We need a new time. As much as I want to do Long, long Live Queen Noble, let's do Long Live Queen Skystar. After a long eventful reign, Queen Noble has decided to retire in favor of a capable daughter. Skystar has been a beloved yet eccentric princess, and now she makes a magnificent queen. I'm also thinking, um, we can just fire war goals and other people, but, um, we do that because we can, with the queen still here, we can still, like, show her what to do and whatnot, and of course we can go to war with other people, but I think this would be a good choice. I mean, I like status quo, don't get me wrong, but we're intervening. Um, we're not spy master. Oh god, I don't want to get involved. We're from royal sovereignty, political power. That's really nice, but we're going to go this way. I want to at least draft a constitution. Or this one, maybe. You know what? Let's do this one. Let's make it a balance, because I don't want necessarily a constitution. I want everyone to be represented at least at, at most. We don't want to have too many radical changes here. And I want more political power, but we don't, we don't even really need it. So, Well, we have no need to embrace constitutionalism. Our existing representatives and institutions have proven quite capable of governing. The Crown should take a step back from legislation, and over time, the role of democracy in the kingdom will expand naturally. Yeah, make it natural. Where are our... Did we lose? Oh, we joined them, so we can't send volunteers. Ah, oh, screw it. Might as well join. Alright, so that's the case. We're going to stop training here, too. This is all nice and not going to get us blown up. Oh, there goes our tourism industry again. It's fine, whatever. Everyone for the war machine? War bonds? Yes. Foreign policy. I'm gonna do this stuff too. It's fine. We weren't even doing stuff to restore war measures. Um, better consumer goods. Add harmony bonds. Yeah, why not? That's fine. That's actually really good to do. Probably a really bad idea. But hey, everybody. Let's go to Equestria. We can use your help. Big carrier's nice. Long live Queen Sky Star. I'm oh, gonna need to mobilize more. God dang it. Yeah. I hate going to this one, but we'll have to. It's fine. Whatever. Leave the tanks at home. At least for now. Zebra Alchemy, very nice. More research speed, yes. Um come over here. Anything else we can do? Yes. Get some more output because you can. Because why not?
Further developed research advanced zebra alchemy. Potion of toughness. Where do I see this technology? Lil B? Lily B, not Lil B, but Lil Lily B. Wait, well, yeah, I don't know where we find the technology. Because I don't think it's here. Triple grip technology, is it? Um, no, I don't see anything there, but capture farm would be really nice. Um, are you there yet? Some of you are almost there. It's actually quite nice. I'll pull the line and we'll push as best we can. Even though we don't have that many planes. Which does suck. There we go. <clears throat> Let's see. Yeah. Entrenched representative institutions for now. We'll see where we end up, but for now. Actually, I probably should have gone some anti-tank already. My bad. My bad. And then, trusting... Carrot stick? Yeah, why not? Chapter and chapter. May have done terrible things, but harmony means giving your enemies a second chance. The surgeons have largely been pacified with the exposure of the crimes of the MLRD. May cheer up Terrans or sorry and want to rebuild some as something better. We'll give them that chance. Hopefully, we'll one day be able to call them friends. The Silver Stream plan. In order to make our oh no yeah uh, make our former former enemies into future allies, Silver Stream has proposed issuing interest-free reconstruction loans to get them back on their hooves. Go a long way towards alleviating the grudges of the war and to make a stable North Zebra. A leap of faith. Friends, country grass, Arisians, Queen, Mothers, and Nobles voice crackled over the radio. Today, my daughter has given her blessing to the new constitution of the Cherub Terran Republic. The signatories include some of the most prominent reformists, both within the Reformer Legions and within the civilian government of Cherub Terra, and it is set to be ratified via constituent assembly within the next week. She asked me to speak on the matter so that no grip could mistake her faith in her former enemies for the folly of youth. <coughs> I know that many of you will never forgive the Cherub Terrans for the war. Many of you will see the Republic as just a continuation of the old legions, and it's true that many legionnaires now work for the, that Republic. I understand your plan or your pain, and I understand that you may be angry with the new queen, but the core of harmony is a fundamental faith and the goodness inside every creature. Most Cherub Terrans are just as shocked at their revelations or revelations during the famous Doctor trials you as you were, and the conscience drove them to change their society. They too have a sense of justice. So today, faced with a former enemy, we want to become a better. We chose peace over war. We chose generosity over suspicion. We chose kindness over vengeance. Already, holdouts of legionnaire resistance are laying down their arms and submitting themselves. To the Republican government. Once the Constitution comes into force, there will be a two year period of, of, of reconstruction under Eris's watchful eye, followed by the complete independence of the Cherub Terran Republic. I ask you to join me, my daughter, and be optimistic about the future, to bury the dead, to heal the maimed, forgive, and if you cannot forgive, work towards our lasting peace. And nevertheless, as of right now, the North African War is truly over. A few boos were heard, but more cheers. Three cheers for the Cherub Terran Republic. Alright, so this will give us the Cherub Terran Republic, huh? And you can even play as them. So let's go ahead and save. That's what I thought would happen. Because we might just play that just for funsies and see what happens. <coughs> Something super easy. Uh, chip. Uh, no, not chip. Chair up Terran Republic save. There you go. A few boos were heard, but more cheers overall. And they're down here. Look at this handsome guy. Carrot stick. Oh my goodness. Look at that jawline. I'm not. I don't have a thing for, for creatures, but Jesus. Okay. Also, we, we did go to war with these guys. Well, obviously. But, like, we're actually pushing really hard. Um, we've got 50, 60,000 losses, but we killed off already, like, a quarter million. So, overall, not bad. And we're just straight pushing right now. Just straight pushing. Uh, I might stop the straight pushing right now, though. You know what? Let's stop it. We need to uh, reorganize ourselves a little bit. Get more max planning going and more organization. But we're still doing Silver Stream Plan. Oh, look at this. Where's the Sky Star? Very, very cool. The North Zebraca Reconstruction. All the armies of North Zebraca were a large engineering corps which put these veterans and soldiers to work rebuilding and connecting the infrastructure of the lands they fought over, building bridges for peace rather than for war. Found the NZFTA. While drug data is necessary in the short term, in the long run, we want all of our allies to have strong, prosperous economies. We'll establish a free trade zone in the North Zebraca, eliminating tariffs and using common custom standards to facilitate commerce and prosperity. <coughs> Excuse me. Strike carrier is a bit ahead of time. I like battleships. I like them big, but still. Uh, we don't have a lot. Oh, scout deck. How would you? Uh, scout deck's alright. Ah, uh, it gives you way more surface detection. That's actually interesting. I like that. That's a different change than normal. You get sub detection and surface detection. You lose the same amount of speed, smaller deck size, but getting one wouldn't be bad, maybe. But again, we probably want just nothing but open hanger stuff, so. Secondary batteries, level 3 is fine. Good level 3 radar, too. We're not going to do that one yet, but it's not good enough yet. 
for us to really want to use. Because all the time. And three, two, one. Let's go ahead and see if we can push any more. Probably not, but we'll see. These guys have actually made it very front, but they're going to lose there. Yeah, we'll see. So, stream plan. Nice. <coughs> How much manpower do they have left? Oh, they got a lot. Over here, they got none. But up here, they got none. They got a lot. Goodness. Yeah, they, they, yeah I'm going to assume that they don't have a lot of... Uh, a stockpile? Yeah, they don't. They really don't. Very nice. We are making some anti-tank, though. Which is pretty good. Tall tail. The liberation of Tall Tail has been completed. Applewood? So, what's your plan? After months of negotiations, the uh, nations of North Zebrica have finally signed under the most ambitious economic plan in the region's history, the Silver Stream Plan. This would see generous reconstruction loans given out in equal measure to Hippogriffia's friends and foes in the North Zebrican War, with each government also agreeing to help its neighbors in developing transportation, commerce, industry, and science. In the long run, other nations who were able to would eventually start contributing to the Silver Stream Plan's fund. While each country's leader had the right to implement its precepts in their own ways, the Silver Stream Plan was based on three principles. <coughs> Excuse me. Peace through prosperity. By improving standards of living, healthcare, and education, all of North Zebrica's nations will put an end to squabbling over scarce resources. Unity through purpose. By having old friends and old foes all cooperate on the grand endeavor of rebuilding and improving the region, will build feelings of national brotherhood and accomplishment. Creatures will no longer look to wars means by asserting national prestige or serving other communities, but instead look to building those things and helping other creatures. Friendship through familiarity. By opening up the borders, sharing literature and science, and developing commerce and tourism, we'll make friends in all different countries in North Africa, where once we saw each other as strange and foreign, we'll see each other as friends and neighbors, different but all good in our own ways. The passage of the Silver Stream Plan was seen as a repudiation to every creature in the United Kingdom of Eris, hungry for revenge against their defeated enemies, as well as, hopefully, a death note or revanchism among those enemies. A beautiful future awaits. Ooh, that's gonna hurt us for quite a while. That's alright. What else are we gonna do with our industry? Shock and awe? You bet we're gonna want shock and awe. And we're going to this one too, of course, which would be great. Uh, passive sonars, all right. Um, we didn't even really focus on tanks at all. We had that thing at the beginning of the campaign, but never really used it very much at all. Which does kind of suck, but, you know, whatever. Infantry is doing quite well. North Zebrica High Command. Training grounds. Well, I guess we can't do Return to Normalcy. Oh, that's true. Oh, I guess I kind of wanted to do that way. But I guess Harmonist Syncretic Economics. While we only implemented it out of desperation, in many ways our wartime economy was more harmonious than our peacetime one. The state, labor unions, and business all work together for the common good. While we return to normal, we can make something better than normal. Early go down or early mobilization, which gives more political power, which is fine. Uh, changes to economic law will be blocked. Adds economics of the state, which is actually very good. Reduce the time to construct all underwater buildings by 10 days. Not bad. Not bad. Oh, God. Yeah. We're going to be losing a lot of resources here, aren't we? Potion of toughness. Of course, we're doing that too, which limits how much good supergoods we have. How far can we go with this? No certain hunter. How far can we go? I mean, don't get me wrong, we're going to go as far as we possibly can. And I do want to get some more war support too, but like we're still at 100%, and we're still attacking. Like, Equestria got so lucky that we actually went the way we did. We beat Wing Bardi, and then we're helping them out too. We're so generous. We've killed off almost 600,000, we're losing 100,000 ourselves, so. It's quite good. For now, I want to. I kind of want to hold, but they're just. They're doing, they're doing so well. In most areas, not every area, but. Hold for now. I want you to plan, get some supplies, get more organization, and then just continue murdering them all. We already have infantry specialist. I should have probably done bolt attack earlier, but whatever. Uh, tactics. Um, breakthrough's not bad. Kind of like over overwhelming fire's not bad either. Let's go breakthrough. Screw it. Oh, look at that. Nice. More reconstruction, yes, please. Ooh, a little bit of lag. Oh, please don't crash the game. Please, please. Okay, ooh, ooh, ooh boy. Oh, trade lobby. Oh, you can't change it. Good, 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 good. Oh, did they change colors? Oh, Umazel, yeah, they did. Ah. Issue of land. Our own tow book. Rise of the desert. desert so. <clears throat> That's cool. And 
3, 2, 1. Let's try it. Decryption power, yes please. Keep building, keep building, 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 building. We need more dockyards too. There we go. Not bad. This might be the final push we really need to get around here. Force defense, yeah. I haven't thrown any anti tank on there yet. We only have 500 some. We don't need that much. We've got a lot of armored cars, which is good, because we're definitely going to need them, but. Put it by five. Because I want to make these guys even thicker if possible. Artillery and can you add on at least one anti tank? No. Oh, another template already exists with this name? Oh. I don't even want to bother with it. There you go. Whatever. Lower by one. There you go. Yeah, I think they're done. Up here, they're not so much, and they don't know why they left these guys all like this, but whatever. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, develop those hills. Computer cruisers, nice. Still get roughly two a day. Like that, that's so good. Like it, that's ridiculous. So good. Oh. Okay. All right. Or is this occupation? Well, whatever. Should be going down eventually. Twenty nine point six point five. Thirty four point zero point one. Not bad. Naval liaison level six. Very good. Artillery, anti tank, yeah, not good. We'll do that too, why not? Siege of Rax. Rax. And three days left. Not bad, pretty good overall. Oh, do you have anything here? Yeah, we haven't done a lot of those focus up there, but that's more important to do down here. Um. Well, uh, since we have Princess Sky Star, I, I prefer National Cynicals Elements because it seems more effective for us, but with essentially planned elements. <clears throat> the Marxists say that under capitalism, creatures are enslaved by the means of production rather than the other way around. While we disagree with the conflict based worldview, we understand how it can feel that way. We'll retain control of the key sectors and nationalize during the war instead of permanent planning bureaus that serve the interests of every creature, owner, worker, and soldier alike. Vesseliopolis? Vesseliopolis, yeah. Vesseliopolis. I'm probably saying that wrong, but whatever. Wow, we need a crap ton of steel. Oh, goodness. Some armor. Honestly, as much as I like the scout stuff, the other ships should be able to do that, and we already have quite a bit of detection, so. And you just want to put as much um, planes on here as possible, so. There you go, that's what we want. Little threes. Yeah, that's a lot of steel. Quest Trooper, Republic, Republic, Stalingrad. That's a lot. Diamond Mountain. The three maybe. Sure for now, that's fine. Yeah, the war's over. <clears throat> Changing the is gone. Wow, we've done eight hundred thousand casualties. They took one point nine million. They took over two million casualties though. I mean, I I lose a lot of manpower too, pony power. Too. I guess I should really say, but still. Beautiful. Ah. Let's give it all Equestria. I'm not super concerned about it. There you go. Do we get any reward of, sort of reward for helping him out? Oh. 
Good job, guys. Great War's over. Whee. And restore the travel agency. Good job, everybody. We're having only four research slots, it doesn't feel like there's really enough for us. You really could use more. Mayor Gypt. Oh! I forgot that we're down here too. Thanks, Wing Barty. <laughs> Thanks for more land. I forgot about that. Um, yeah. Nice. There you go. Nice. Oh, we can do either one. Uh, well, since we went Princess Sky, so we might as well go with that one. Um, expand private industry. National semi-plus. Well, I guess we have to go expand state industry. The nationalization of major industries that may have been an act of wartime necessity, but has proven very effective. When push comes to show, the state is the only institution that can run the economy for the good of the nation. It must expand the operations of state-owned industries to increase economic output. Pensions for veterans. Hippogriffs, sea ponies, and zebras fought and died defending harmony from its enemies. Just as we honor the sacrifice of those who did not return, we must also provide for those who did. Generous pensions and benefits like tuition-free higher education will ensure that veterans and their families can live happy, uh, prosperous lives. To commodify food, austerity and spending, that sound, does not sound like we should do right that right now, but to commodify food? Our citizens already have the right of free speech and assembly, but how can they enjoy them without the right to eat? All creatures require sustenance to live. And things essential to life should not be commodified. We must create a social program capable of providing all our citizens with the food that they need in a social state. Harmony isn't just an agreement to the people to leave the people alone. It's a commitment to look out for them and their well-being. We'll take this responsibility very seriously and have them build a state that will ensure every citizen their basic needs met. For friendship to thrive, our society must be made up of happy and healthy creatures. Trade offer from Gold Egg. Representatives from Gold Egg have come up to us proposing a trade treaty between our two nations. This agreement would remove all barriers to mutual trade, paving the way for increased cooperation in economic relations, Kothay currently, or has traditionally. But no one is a gateway of Zebraca, being an important nexus between east-west trade and Entrepot for goods coming across countless Zebrakan trade routes. Although devastated by the Storm King's invasion in recent years, at this point they seem to have fully recovered. Signing the treaty would open up fully Kothagian markets to us, giving us access to valuable goods such as coffee, pearls, porcelain, ivory, and sugar, just to name a few. However, it also might result in economic disruption for us in the short term and increase interdependence with Kothag in the longer term. So accept the proposal? Yeah, who will turn down more wealth as we're doing pensions for veterans and we'll decommodify food as we stated earlier. So if we went to return to normalcy, we'll probably end up going with this route too, but decommodify food as, let's see, what other things we can grab here? Some of this, yes, that'd be good. God, we need so much steel, it's not even funny. I really didn't even focus much on planes, which I should have done earlier. I'll be honest, I should have focused them more on planes. That's my fault. Um, but it is what it is. And the deed is done. And now, we have a very, very strong United Ponies Alliance. All of us here. Um, the only one I think it could take us on really would either be the Republican Pact or even River Coalition. Not, probably not these guys. Probably not the Socialist Union. Um, probably not the Ancient Pact, but, you know, we're looking pretty good. As long as no one else wants to go to war with us, we'll be fine. Of course, I did read the Social State last time, but to do this one, Training Grounds at Grand Alaudia. Oh, boy. Oh, it's going to take a while to get to it, isn't it? Of course, one of the following requires continued army modernization. Um, as a small nation, we've always believed that our first and foremost priority for the army should be better guns than our foes. Some military theorists advocate for changing our course, while they say that has served us well should remain. Either way, keeping our theory of modern war, or war modern, is absolutely critical in these times. Now, honestly, I prefer this one to get more organization, which is better, I, in my opinion, than maybe max planning. Because that only works on an attack. Um, I choose this one more, Lessons from the Enemy, but we're going to go with this one because I'll choose that other one next time we do this. Invite Griffin Theorists. The Griffonian School of War has long been the maximal planning and preparation that is the method by which victories won. We can approach them for guidance on their own war machine to help us organize properly and training grounds at Grand Alaudia. Grand Alaudia is built with jungles and plains, and it's respectively distant from Mount Eris. Summoning our entire army there to practice war games and then conducting extensive surveys on the experience of both foot soldiers and generals will help us reorganize our army and refine our military doctrine. Not a bad idea. Um, and then we can do the North Zebrakan High Command. New hope is emerging in the lands of our former enemies. Old hatreds are starting to disperse, and trust is building. This presents a unique opportunity. Our former enemies are magnificent soldiers, and if we can combine our expertise in a unified general staff, there's no telling what we could accomplish. The first step will be organize a series of war, ga war games at the Grand Alaudia Training Grounds, and a second beacon of harmony. The only beacon of harmony, well, second beacon. Eris now stands as a beacon of harmony and justice across North Zebraca, and North Zebraca itself is an example of the world. No longer is the question alone in the dark world, now a second uh, 
Beacon. Kolthagen independence. After years of military occupation and reconstruction, the United Kingdom of Eris' efforts in Kolthagen have finally come to an end. The Kolthagen Republic is no longer a nation ruled by corrupt autocrats and warmongering nationalists. It's become a thriving, harmonic democracy. Now that the new government has firmly established itself, the United Kingdom of Eris has decided to withdraw its remaining occupation forces and recognize the Kolthagen Republic as an independent, co-equal member of its alliance. As the last Eresian troops left Kolthagen, Jezebzela Zeshmid gave a speech cheering crowds, two cheering crowds. She thanked the hypocrites for overthrowing the illegitimate tyrants who destroyed the democracy and promised that Kolthag will remain a beacon of harmony and freedom. They come so far in so little time. Which does kind of suck. I did want to keep them with us, but oh well. It is what it is. It is what it is. And we're looking alright. So over a million of manpower. Plenty of political power. Oh, we did go to partial mobilization just just because we can. So we can start building stuff up more. So, um... We're still inviting the theorists. We're gonna do the training grounds, and of course we'll come down and do this one, and then we'll do that one. But we'll Invitation see. to the North Zebrican War Games. The United Kingdoms of Eris has invited us to participate in a series of military exercises that are calling the North Zebrican War Games. Although they emerged victorious in the North Zebrica War, there are still potential threats on the horizon. They argue that the best way to defend North Zebrica, or Zebrica, is to coordinate our efforts with all of our regional allies. This offer is certainly intriguing, and since the Arisians have promised extensive inf information and sharing it will likely prove beneficial for military. Wow. Oh, look at that. Um, some officers may object to sharing our strategies and tactics with foreign powers. Greater cooperation with our allies can be key to improving our national defense. Keep your slimy flippers off from military secrets. Sounds intriguing. Of course, we're in. Of course, we were the ones hosting it, so, I mean, we're kind of expected to be in. But whatever. Whatever. As we're trying to improve our ships here a little bit, too, but... This whole not having steel things is not good, but the North Zebrican War Games. After several weeks of military exercises, simulations, and weapon tests, the North Zebrican uh, War Games has come to a close. The experience has given our armed forces valuable insights into the combined uh, capabilities of our military lines. The United Kingdom of Eris, as the host country, had the most impressive showcase. The Arisian Navy is one of the, not, if not the strongest navy in the world, and it's stunned observers with the speed and precision of its maneuvers. The Arisian Air Force was no slouch either, showing off the expert flying skills that brought down the Storm King's air fleet. The Arisian Army, not to be outdone, practiced new and innovative assault tactics. In the end, no other alliance member came close to matching the Arisian military might, not even Equestria. Now the games have concluded and all participants have returned home. Every one of them is confident in their alliance's capability to defend us and all other member states. This opens up so many opportunities. Precision bombing. Cluster bombing. Ooh. I like bombing people. Well, that's second beginning of army. So with this, um, we can do we can't do this one because the cost of free state does not exist. But we could do in-depth cooperation with the OHS, or we can do provide preserving friendship with a smile. Which I think makes sense because we are in alliance with the Questia so. The questions are natural allies to Hippocryphia, and the experience dealing with the Vops has probably taught them even more about our experience with the Nightmare's Hoop. We should reach out to Smile to deepen our cooperation with them. It's absolutely, it just makes sense. And you get more daily compliance, which is amazing. That's more daily harmony support. That's not bad, too. So, um, Oh, wow. Hello. Oh. You went to war with these guys. I wonder what was going on. Khan Zagu. Strength tra 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 Tradition. Ah, uh, the generic focus tree. This could be like a Mongolian one. No wonder you're sending all of you guys over here. Harmonious Kothagian Republic. Empowered Sufrit. Lady Socialite. Very violent lady, though. Very, 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 very violent lady. We have so many divisions that you yeah, losing supply. Oh. Or is it because of you? It might be because of you. What about radios? Ah. Modern Naval Theory. Battleship. Ooh, that one's good to do for us. Oh, oh, but this is not bad either. Uh, let's go and just do sub operations for now. That's fine. And smile. Smile, you land lovers. Um, that's interesting. I've not actually looked at this part before. Uh, wait. Oh, uh, butterfly fall. So, carrier, carrier sub detection and organization. You get carrier organization, same thing, but more sword efficiency, which is very good for carriers. Very, very strong, which is, I would say, this is better so far. Um, organization for light cruisers, armor, light attack, surface visibility. This is for more battleship stuff, which is very good if you really have in the battleships. But I, since um, if I use carriers, I can use a lot of light cruisers too, so I'd probably just go this way, even though this is not bad either. Don't get me wrong, it's pretty good. If I'm using more battleships, I'll definitely go this way, because it's a carrier support versus carrier core. And carry overcrowding is good, so if you have too many ships or too many planes on there, uh, that would be very good as well. Oh, yeah, puppeted. 
It reduces the penalty for overcrowding your carriers with planes. With this, you can get more planes in the area even when over capacity, which is just very strong. So if you have like five carriers, that'd probably be it. Area denial. Maybe he's fast as targets at hunting that track them down without delay and blast them apart one by one. Strike force organization lost max speed. That's not bad. But carriers usually aren't the slowest ships. But this one, uh, I don't know. Carrier at max speed, that's okay. Unless they're like extremely slow. But it's usually not the carriers that are extremely slow. It's the battleships. So, and that, uh, I'm not sure that's really worth it. Unless it's just like a task force. Just with carriers and like destroyers or light cruisers. But, I think that's pretty much going to be it for us here. Because I've done all the stuff that, mostly it's all harmony stuff that we really care about. Because this stuff on the right side, it'll happen for every campaign too, so. I think we're going to end it here. Man, this has been one heck of an adventure for the first uh, campaign of the Zebrica continent. But, I know I've raged quite a bit in the second episode, but it is what it is. And, well, regardless, hope you enjoyed it. Because this is fun. I love what the devs have done. I've, I keep praising the devs and they absolutely deserve all the praise they get. So, if you enjoyed the campaign, leave a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below. And I'll see you tomorrow in another campaign. Thanks for watching. Have a great United Ponies Alliance rest of your day.